Hello everyone, I'm back today and we have a new series of video that's the master cam for beginner who are new to uh, master cam and the first lesson today is about the facing tone pad you know the facing tone pad is very very basic tone pads of master cam that's allow user to remove the material from the top of the park um, we have uh, many ways to uh, do this uh, operation we can use the facing tone pad or just the pocket tone pad or uh, uh, surface tone pad anyone you uh, you like but in this lesson I will show you how to use the facing tone pad to do the facing operation okay and I'm sorry for my best English. I hope I can improve it uh, with my video. And if you have any comment about my English, you can uh, write out comment. I um, really, really want to receive the feedback from uh, from you. Okay, thank you. And here's the the a sample part. For example, we have a rectangular block. A solid block with dimension of 4 inch uh, and uh, 2.5 in inches and we want to uh, do a facing operation to remove the material from the top of this stock okay I will uh, turn on the solid block you can click on the level in master game you can use level to uh, easily uh, organize the entity in your workspace okay I will turn on the solid block you can see that okay you can see that this is our block and I want to remove the material from the top face uh, to begin I will select a machine for the job okay I have a mu d4 or mu 3x here I can uh, set up the stock. Okay, you can select the boundary. Okay. And for example, we uh, leave uh, point zero or point uh, uh, zero two inches to remove sorry I don't know how to say it in English okay we can view from front we can see that we live about uh, uh, 0 0.02 inches to remove you can see here this, this is the material we need to remove yes very easy Okay, and to use the facing tool pad, you move the tool pad menu and select the face tool pad here. The first tool pad method can we ask us to input the NC name. Okay, I will input the facing. All right, and then click OK. Then a uh, window we open that's the chaining window. This allow us uh, to uh, select the machine area you have many ways to select a machine area you can select it in uh, wireframe mode or even in the uh, solid mode if you have a uh, solid in the master cam okay if you have this solid uh, if you the park you have the solid you can uh, direct select the solid or if you don't have the solid of the park you can select use the chain to select the machine areas for example in uh, this with the post I only have the profile chain like this so I can select the chain option here and I will select the chain here is a glove and this chain will define the area that we need to remove the material for the facing tool pad after select the chain you click OK and the next step we need to select the tool for the job 
here I have a uh, four and two point five inches uh, dimension, so I can select a uh, face milling or a face mill or a solid or uh, end mill. It's uh, up to you. For example, we have the width of the park is two point five inches. I can select a big good diameter face cutter for example I can select a three three inches face mill okay then you input the cut parameter for example the spin of speed of the tool the feed rate and the plunge rate next we move to the cut parameter to do the facing with facing tool and pad, master cam uh, provide you some kind of uh, tool and pad you can see here in the style in the style check box. We pull it down and you can see uh, we have four types of facing tool and pad. First the zigzag, then one way, one pass, and dynamic. We will um, learn for each uh, case. For one way, okay, for zigzag first, this master can show you how a zigzag tool facing tool pass look like. The tool uh, engage in uh, one side of the park, then do the cut to the other side here, and it turn back and cut back and uh, do the reverse motion. And then you can uh, see that no tool retract in the zigzag tool pass. This is quite simple. The next type is the one way. It's uh, different with the, the zigzag tool pad that uh, in the end of the uh, stroke of a tool pad, you have a tool retract here. The tool retract and move to the next position here, and the tool will go just one way. Do not move uh, the reverse direction. And you have the one pass option. In one pass option, you can select a bigger tool uh, compared with the material uh, dimension. So you can cut the facing only in one pass. The disadvantage of the one pass uh, option is that the tool will the tool center will align with the park center. That we don't want. If the tool center is aligned with the park center, there will be uh, ten, it tend to be uh, vibration and it reduce the tool life. So if we use one pass, uh, we should uh, do some modification after posting the program to uh, move the tool center a bit. Uh, uh, get out of the park center. That will be better for our tool and the surface finish. Okay, and the dynamic, you can see here, there's the dynamic, the, the tool will move a uh, uh, morph spiral curve from outside to inside of the park. Okay, I will uh, start with the zigzag tool path first. After select the style, the cutting style, you move to other parameter, like across overlap, along overlap, approach distance, and exit distance. You can have smack step over, uh, cutting uh, the type, climb a convenient, the cutting angle, the move between cuts. Okay, we come with the a cross overlap first. A cross overlap is the distance between the park edge to the farthest point of the tool. For example, you can see here. Uh, distance from here to here is the overlap value. You can input uh, in uh, percentage of tool diameter or input by uh, inch. Any anything you want, yeah. For example, I want that the tool will uh, will go out of the park uh, uh, distance of fifteen percent of tool. And see here is automatically changed to. 
and with this nearly uh, the same meaning of cross overlap we have the along overlap along overlap is the distance the tool will move further than the SFA in the cutting direction <coughs> uh, I will pause the the tool pad and I will show you to make it look clearer and this is our uh, long overlap that means the distance from here to here from here to here that's the long overlap you got a plus distance for the first and entry or for the entry of the tool and we got this from here to here e our approach distance that's the distance the tool go inside the park yes and the exit distance when the tool finish the cut it will move far away from the park and this from here to here is the exit distance okay I can get 55 for example 55 and 55 okay then you have this max step over that's the distance between uh, two cut that's mean from here to here that's the step over I can go at 60% uh, of tool diameter you see our tool the diameter is 3 inches and with the 60% that's the value we 1.8 inches step over okay and you can select here the climb cut or conventional cut and you can see here we have a uh, option core even uh, what's what this work uh, I don't know how to read this work even or event or or something or uh, even number of passes if you click on this option, the number of passes is uh, always an even number. So you can uncheck it to save time in some time. In some case, you can save time. I will show you the different. Okay, we can take it first and then I will remove it to see the different. And here we move to another important parameter that's the roughing angle. That's the, the angle of the cuts of our cuts. For example, if you want the tool move uh, uh, parallel to the ex exit, uh, you can input uh, 0 or 180. Yes, this different. I will show you how the, dis the different. For example, we use the 0 degree angle. Next, we move. Uh, uh, we have uh, another option that's called move between cuts. That's what is it? Yes, the uh, you can see this one cut, two cut, three cut. And if you want to select a, a transition type from this cut to this cut, you can select here. You have uh, three option high speed loop. You can see this is the high sp speed loop. The tune will roll over from here to here. If you have the linear option a tool will go here and go straight to here not this loop not uh, run over is uh, linear okay well we should select the linear first you can also wrap it I mean the tool will wrap it travel from here to here to, and from here to here you can also select the feed rate between cut the transition feed rate okay and here you can input the value to uh, leave the, how much material you can leave on the face if you don't want to leave any material you can input it zero and you also have the depth cut option if you have too much material from the top of the park you can uh, cut it into multiple depth for example, I have. Uh, you can input the maximum rough step. For example, I input point, uh, point zero five, and you can input the number of finished cut. For example, I want to make a one finished cut with the finished step. The finished step is the material uh, to be removed in the finished cut. For example, five thousand. 
Okay, you can set the keep tune that option to avoid the tune to track. Also, uh, click on sub program to for mask game to output the sub program for you. Okay, then we move to linking parameter. <clears throat> yes, the last most important parameter is the linking parameter. Here you have some uh, some uh, thing need to declare. You have the clearance. If you want to set the clearance for the tool, you check this checkbox and input the clearance value. You also need to uh, input the retract value for the tool after do the cut. You also need to input the feed rate. For example, the feed rate is 0.5. You also need to uh, input the top of stock. What's uh, the top of stock is the uh, need to calculate the number of depth cut here. Mastercam need to know how much stock uh, leave on left on the top, so it can calculate how many cut need to be generated to cut the material. For example, in my park. I have poised at the two um, inches material need to be cut and I will cut it to the right uh, dimension uh, okay, okay I can input it as zero okay and we click OK to select uh, generate tool pad oh sorry I need to uh, select the Construction plan. I will. I will look it from top. So okay. I will select change it again. Oh, tool pan must be top. Sorry. All right. You can see that our facing tool pad. Yes, our facing tool pad. Yes. Okay. The tool will plunge outside the park. And you can see this is how it moves. Yes, this is zigzag tool pad. With the zero degree angle. So I will change I make some change to see the difference for you to see the difference. Okay, I hear I want to uh, Make the tool go for further uh, from the park. I can input it uh, 60 percent, for example. For production, I can input to 70 percent. You can see, yes, you can see that this the um, a production longer. Okay. Or you can input the uh, exit distance to make it the tool will move further from the park. You can see that. And you can also select the move between cut is the high speed loop. Click OK to see what different. Yeah, you can see this. This is the high speed loop option. The tool will roll over at the end of the cut. The tool move to the end of the cut. Yes, and make a transition here. See that? Okay, now I'm going to change the cutting angle to see what different. You can see that just we cut at zero degree, and now I input 180. Let's see what things. Yo, you can see the different. The tool move from right to left, and it create a 180 degree angle. Yes, so you can see here. Yeah, move the right from right to left and create a 180 angle. Maybe you can use the 45 degree, for example. Yeah, you can see here, and it create a 45 degree tool pad. If you want the tool move along with the y axis, you can input uh, 90 degree or even. Uh, 270. 
Yeah, you can see this is a 90 degree tone pad. Okay. I will show you what is the overlap. You can see this from here to here that's the a lot uh, across overlap and from here to here is the long overlap okay we change we uh we move to another style that is one way to see the difference Yes, it's the one way. As I select one way, you see uh, the tomb body is still be uh, zigzag. Why? Why it's happened? I will show you. I will show you why. If you take in this option, the reverse direction of the last part, the last part will be uh, revert. Okay, uncheck this, and you see that's totally one way. Yeah. A tool move to the end of the cut, then retract, move to the beginning of the cut, then go down and cut again. This is the one way. With the one way, we don't have the transition move here. You can see this deactive. Okay, how about one pass? Bing. Yeah, you can see the one pass option here. Cut the material with uh, one, just only one pass to save time. And you can see that the tool center here, that's a lie with the park center. That's we don't want to happen. Not so good for the tool. To use this one pass option, your tool diameter must be uh, larger than the park dimension. Park width, I mean. Okay. Uh, I will select a smaller tool for you to. For example, I can select a end mill to do the facing operation. You can use an end mill to do the facing operation. Uh, for example, uh, okay, this tool. Yes, when you select a smaller tool, smaller than the park wood, Mastercam will uh, generate a warning that show you that the tool diameter is not large enough to face the park in one pass. So you have to change the cut style here. For example, I do with a zigzag again. Yeah, you can see here we got a zigzag. If you want the tool to totally move out of the park, we can increase the along overlap value here. For example, one hundred and ten percent to let the tool go out of the park at the extra stroke. Okay, you can see that the tool move out of the park here. Yes, so you can make a rapid transition from the past or the past. Yes, you can see the yellow is the, the rapid motion. See here, it's cut from here to here and then make a rapid transition and go back. Rapid transition, go back. In order to you to try the rapid move, the along of the last must be larger than the tone diameter. If I input a value that's smaller than the tone diameter, master can we do is will uh, not allow us to do uh, the rapid transition because the tone is not uh, completely go out of the park, so this can be dangerous. You can see that's warning here.
so the a long overlap must be greater than a two in diameter in order to use the rapid motion here. No problem with high speed loop and no problem with the linear option. So I can try to select an even number of paths. Let's see what happened. So you can count how many paths are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 park. That's an even number. Okay, how about if I uncheck this? Oh, you can see the difference, right? Go from here and now from here. And I will count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, only 11. So if you uncheck this box, the number of paths can be an odd number, not even number. That's the difference. So we can try the dynamic. Uh, I uh, rarely use this option. But let's try this to see how it moves. Oh, you can see that's the dynamic motion. Yes, that's look cool. Not bad, right? Dynamic motion for facing. Okay, this the simple example for the facing tool pad. You can select uh, a chain for the facing error, or you can select um, a solid. Yeah, solid in the solid environment I can select this face right this oh yes you see yeah the same result right or you can use the uh, look uh, look option here no need to select the face and use uh, we delete this add another chain so I can select directly on our, my solid. Uh, it's not important uh, where the chain is located. It can locate at a uh, Z uh, minus one inches or any Z value. It just defines the, the cutting error. So it doesn't matter if you select the chain here or select the chain here. No different result. So you can see, I select the chain at the bottom of the park, but the facing tool pass is on the top of the park. So the chain is not uh, defect uh, the Z value of the tool pad. The tool pad will uh, follow this in linking parameter. So I input zero. That means zero in absolute mode. Okay, I uh, will uh, have another park to see how the facing tool pad work. I got another park here. I will select it. Uh, add, three, select all, select the chain. Okay. Yes, you can see that's the facing tool pad work. How about we select the zigzag? Alright. Boom. Yes, there's the problem with uh, 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 not. Uh, mm, sorry, what uh, I want to say. If you have a park like this, the not a rectangle or not a round. So you can see the tool will move, travel through the air error here no material here but the tool also cut this so it can uh, be a waste of time when you use a, a zigzag tool pad or you uh, same one way there's no different a tool cut into the error that have no material yeah you can see that this is the waste of time only the dynamic 
allow us to cut where the material where we have the material yes yeah, you can see here it do it doesn't cut in this area uh in another lesson when we talk about the pocket tool pad i will show you uh, another way to do the facing uh with pocket tool pad in this lesson we just talk about the facing tool pad okay let me see any anything need to be revealed maybe not because this uh tool pad is very very simple Okay, I will come back in uh, another video and the next lesson is we will talk about the uh, um, 3D contour tool pad. Yes, contour tool pad is uh, one of the most to you one of the most used tool pad in Mastercam and I will talk about this in the next lesson. Thank you for watching. I hope you can uh, enjoy my video and uh, give me some comment which uh, uh, you feel I'm uh, doing well or uh, which you feel I need to be improved to make my video better and uh, can have you uh, better. Just let me know. No worry. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.